Welcome back to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper. Let's continue with our politics lead. President Trump trying to bury his former chief strategist, Steve Bannon. First, the president said publicly that Bannon lost his mind. Then the White House said Breitbart, where Bannon serves as executive chairman, should consider firing him. And now President Trump wants to hit Bannon where it hurts, his wallet, by talking to Bannon's biggest financial backer, Rebecca Mercer. Trump tweeting this morning, quote, the Mercer family recently dumped the leaker known as sloppy Steve Bannon, smart. On top of all that, candidates backed by Bannon seem to be distancing themselves from him in the wake of the revelations from this book, including my next guest, Michael Grimm, who after a seven-month prison term for tax evasion is now running for his former congressional seat, which represents Staten Island, uh, New York. Uh, Mr. Grimm, thank you so much uh, for joining me. I want to ask you about your distancing uh, yourself from, from Bannon. You tweeted this picture of you and Bannon October 4th, uh, three days after you announced your campaign. This week, you, quote, strongly denounced the comments from Steve Bannon. What does this mean? Is Bannon not going to play any more role in your campaign at all? No. Well, I mean, from the very beginning, I said that you know, one of the main reasons why I'm running for Congress is to forward President Trump's agenda and the pro-American agenda. And I cannot work with anyone that does not want to forward that agenda and that will do anything that will harm uh, the Trump administration. And I think that this book as a whole uh, is harmful because it's a major distraction. We just came off a great year for the president and for the administration. And yet what we're talking about are these salacious allegations in this book. What is it about specifically that, that bothers you the most of the allegations? Is it uh, the way that Bannon describes uh, Donald Trump Jr. as unpatriotic and treasonous? Uh, is it his criticisms of the president's temperament or not taking advice? What specifically has upset you? Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, I have been strongly saying over and over again that anyone that gives any credence to this Russia gate or the Russia collusion story uh, is adding fuel to a fire that is only, in my humble but professional opinion, is a political witch hunt. And so that that in of itself is very harmful to this administration. And, and I don't think anyone should ever take uh, shots at anyone's children. That's just, I think, something that uh, that's how I was raised. And I think especially when you're talking about the president of the United States. Listen, I understand that, you know, especially in the media, there's a lot of people that don't like the president. Um, and he's had a, a tough run with the media. And, he's, and he often is out there, you know, counterpunching and, and defending himself. But to go after his family is, is to me, is crossing a line. Well, let me ask you, you called the Russia investigation a witch hunt. What was your response uh, when you read the emails that Donald Trump Jr. himself put out that showed that he had a meeting in Trump Tower with a woman that had been sold to him as a, a Russian government lawyer promising dirt on Hillary Clinton during the campaign? Did that not alarm you that e even if there wasn't evidence of collusion from that meeting, there was a, a willingness to get dirt from a foreign government uh, about a political opponent? Well, I think when, you know, again, when you're doing oper operational research um, during a campaign, you take whatever information is, is at the table. Now, I would never work with a foreign government, but again, these are people that have never been in politics before, and it, it certainly doesn't show collusion. You know, there, there, there is no evidence so far well over a year of an investigation that shows any collusion whatsoever. And that's the point. Listen, there's a special counsel put in place, but yet no one can say what specific statute has been breached. You know, I don't know of a, of a collusion statute, but what statute has been breached that this investigation is predicated upon? Uh, when you look well, at there all been the... Two, I mean, with all due respect, there have been two guilty pleas uh, lying to the FBI both times about conversations with Russians, uh, and then two indictments for uh, money laundering having to do uh, with a pro-Russian party in Ukraine. I mean, it's not like there's nothing there. Right, but again, what you're looking at is none of those indictments have anything to do specifically with Russia collusion or more specifically the Trump presidency or candidacy. You know, what Paul Manafort may or may have not have done before um, has nothing to do with the campaign from, from Donald Trump. I, I could go on about that, but I do want to ask you uh, about Bannon um, because you, I know, consider yourself a loyal guy. Uh, you talked about that earlier today, that loyalty is very important to you. Let me play devil's advocate here. You're a convicted felon. You once threatened to throw a reporter off a balcony and break him in half like a boy. You, you've apologized for that. <laughs> the reporter accepted the apology, but it, it, you would probably admit it wasn't your greatest moment. Bannon stuck his neck out for you after you were released from prison and you wanted to get back into public life. For a guy who went to jail, don't you think you're being a little unforgiving? Well, first, let me say, you know, when you say that convicted felon, it's very important, you know, and no reporter ever prefaces this. 
it was a civil matter. Three delivery boys off the books. I'm literally the first and first restaurant owner in the history of New York City not to be given a fine, not to be given a fine. That's a political witch hunt. That's why I'm so uh, upset when I hear people fueling the fire of the political witch hunt of this Russia game. You pleaded guilty, that though. Be, that being said, yes, just like, listen, I didn't have $500,000 to go to trial. I'm sorry, I'm not wealthy. But, and I couldn't risk my, both my mother and sister being thrown out into the street because I'm the one that supports the household. So when the entire weight of the Obama Justice Department is against you and they're singling you out for delivery boys off the books, literally four people off the books at a restaurant that I sold five years before, that, my friend, is the definition of a political witch hunt. So uh, you're much more of an expert on, on your case than I am. But my understanding is one of the reasons you were sentenced to prison is because the judge thought that you were unrepentant uh, and that you needed to go to jail to realign uh, your moral compass. Um, well, again, what do you say? Again, what do you, let me Obama, just ask you. I, I an Obama-appointed judge, mm -hmm. okay, that, that snarked at the, when we put in a motion for selective prosecution saying we're literally the only case in the entire history of the New York City. And the prosecutors didn't refute that. They said, yes, this is the only case in the history of New York City. They went back five years for delivery boys off the books. So maybe they yes, were trying to make an example of you because you were a member of Congress. Higher right, standards but it happened, for you. Uh, and, and with all due respect, it happened well before I was a member of Congress. So to single someone out for something that everyone else gets a civil fine for, I'm sorry, that's a political witch hunt to me. Well, let me ask you while we're on this subject, because obviously you're, you're still not repentant. You, you, you feel as though you were uh, unfairly treated by the justice system. Why should the voters of Staten Island give you a second chance? Well, number one, there's no question as a civil wrong. I was, I was absolutely wrong. I take full responsibility for that. And I paid a horrific, horrific price. All I'm saying is everyone should be treated equally under the law. Okay, as an FBI agent, that's what I did. Okay, I was a good U.S. Marine. I was an excellent FBI agent. And the reality is, yes, here in New York, if you want to have a dishwasher and a delivery boy, unfortunately, it's very hard to get them on the books. That being said, it was wrong, and I deserve the civil fine 100%. So it's not like I, I think that it's okay to do that or I'm advocating and I'm not I'm sorry for doing that. I am. But I was also an excellent congressman. OK, during Superstorm Sandy, I produced for everyone. I passed national legislation, national legislation that reformed the flood insurance that we still have today. The Grim Waters Bill is still the law of the land today. So I moved mountains and I led as a congressman nationally on a national stage with my heart and soul to take care of the people of Staten Island. And I think that the, that the voters in Staten Island remember how hard I worked. And I also think, because I get it every day in the street when I get stopped, that they know it was a political witch hunt. And yes, maybe I deserve the fine, but there's no way I deserve the criminal prosecution. Michael Grimm, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. How does the Russia investigation impact the United States' relationship with our allies?